Good morning. So today's lesson is all about the three different types of errors. I hope that you'll find this nice and easy because we do this a lot. Most students find this quite challenging. So the more practice you have with Python, the easier this becomes. Um, we said that there are three types of errors. The easiest to find and fix the syntax errors because you get the error messages that tell you exactly where to find them. Then the next easiest to find and fix are runtime errors because the code tries to do something impossible, it crashes, and at least it tells you what it's tried to do and what it was trying to do at the time with a, a line number. These ones are the hardest because it will do something that is what you've told it to do, but you've told it to do the wrong thing. Um, so there's a, a mistake in the code that we've probably written, so we're probably not that aware of our own mistakes. The only way to find and fix them is to write out those trace tables to step through line by line until we work out exactly what's going on. So um, we need a definition of each of these types of errors. Um, so yeah, part of the code breaks the rules of the programming language. For example, you've forgotten a bracket at the end of something um, and it refuses to run at all. Good, so there we go. A computer cannot execute the instruction and it causes the program to crash. And we've listed some examples um, in our discussion in class, things like trying to open a file that doesn't exist or trying to download a file over the internet when you've not connected. How about a logic error? Um, so a unexpected behavior, it might cause a runtime error. It will never cause a syntax error. Logic error um, is where the, the code is valid. It just doesn't do what you want it to do because we told it to do the wrong thing. So one thing that is really helpful is if you can step through the program. Remember, you need to be able to do those trace tables for your exam, but it's also a really helpful skill to look at code and understand it. Um, so I would always recommend an exam, you use the lid of your pen or you use your finger or use your pencil to just say, this is the line of code I'm on at the moment. And then just move it down line by line or if you're in a loop, jump back to the next thing in the for loop or the while loop or something so you can keep track of where you are. You need to be super precise about your loops and your selection statements. What does that mean? So if you've got an if statement, you work out what the condition is, see if it's true or false. You need to use some paper to help you with that, then you can do. For your loops, you've got for loops and while loops. Work out what your starting value is and what your stopping value is. And we need to be really careful with our brackets um, so that our Boolean operators are evaluated as the author intends. Okay, what is a Boolean operator? So by Boolean operators, we mean and, or, and not. Um, so in in order to find and fix syntax errors, we just press run. You press run and it will underline it or give you an error message and it gives you a line number. We just have to remember that the line number is not always where the error is, but it's always on that line or above it. Um, so it's never going to be the line underneath where it says <coughs> the line um, error is on the error message, but it might be the line above or the line above that. It's the line of code above it. So if the line above it is empty, or the line above it is a comment, then you just keep looking upwards. How about runtime errors? Well, sometimes you just wait until it crashes, um, and then you look at the error message and see what's there. So you, you check data types, because we've said already it's impossible to convert things like sausage into an integer. Um, we need to check uh, out of bounds um, runtime errors. For example, if you've got an, a list of five colors, and you try and look at the sixth color, um, then it's going to crash. And um, in some languages, if you spell something wrong, like you do prompt instead of print, uh, in some languages that would break the rules of the language and give you a syntax error. In Python, um, Python's an interpreted language and it will only try and call the function when it gets to that line. So that would be a runtime error in Python. If you do prompt instead of print, it will try and call prompt at that moment in time. It will realize it doesn't know what prompt is and then it will fail. Logic errors, you've just got to step through. Um, so you've just got to step through. Check for boundary conditions. What How many to trace through? So that's essentially it today. Um, your job, we're on CT16. Put your definition of um, these types of errors. I'm looking for two points. So for example, syntax error. Um, it's a problem where the code has broken the rules of the language, one mark, so that the code will not run at all, second mark. So tell me what it is and tell me what the effect of that error. For activity two, you get a link to the code. I don't think you know it. 
you just have to, to check through. Remember, if this was an exam, you put your thumb on line one and you say, hmm, is that sensible? Is that right? Is there a, a syntax error? Is there a logic error? Is there a runtime error? And you go through each line until you see something that looks, hmm, that doesn't look right. There might be a bracket missing, in which case it's a syntax error. There might be a value that looks incorrect or the wrong operator, in which case it's a logic error. Or it might try and do something impossible, in which case it's a runtime error. You've just got to say which of them is in here. Preferably, you'll explain why it's that type of error, please. For example, this one is a syntax error because there's a colon missing. Yes? Uh, well, it depends. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, if it runs at all, there's no syntax errors. So if, if the first line of code runs, that means there's no syntax errors. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're free from runtime and logic errors. The only way to find that is by testing it. <laughs> Not necessarily, because your your runtime errors might happen at a random moment. So they might happen if you suddenly disconnect the, the um, uh, Wi-Fi, that might trigger a, um, a runtime error. I'm going to go through activity three, the first part of activity three anyway, just for the first one. So for activity three, you are given again the code, so you could just run it and put the values in, but I want you to be able to do this without using the code. So remember, you'd put your finger on the piece of paper and you'd say, right, I'm setting the value of butter to zero. So this is initialization, you're setting the value of each variable and then you're setting the value of flour you're not asked to do a whole trace table here but you could um, if you particularly wanted to um, or you might see a question like that in an exam so here we go butter is 125 so butter here is going to be set to 125 when we type it in and then we're going to put flour in as 200 we're going to put sugar in as 150 when we get to this line and then eggs is going to be two when we get to that line just here so let's have a look this is what the powerpoint meant by being really careful about all of the um, the operators and the conditional logic 
So when I get to this line, I'm going to put my pen next to that line if it's on paper in an exam, um, or I might put a break point on it if I'm running it in Fonny or Moo. If butter is less than 250, well, what's butter? Butter is 125. So is 125 less than 250? Yes, it is. So therefore, it's going to say buy butter. Which is going to go in there. Then it says elif. So that's not going to run because we have done the if. So we don't need to worry about that. And we also don't need to worry about this one because elif only runs if the original condition has not been run. And we don't have to do that elif and we don't have to do that else. So all we need to say is buy butter. here, And then you need to do the same for each of the outputs. Be really careful when you are combining your Boolean um, conditions, your Boolean expressions. Remember, for an or, you need either the Boolean expression on the left or the Boolean expression on the right. Either of those are true, then this is going to run. And you need both. So if the thing on the left is true and the thing on the right is true, and by thing I mean Boolean expression, what's a Boolean expression? A question with an answer that is either true or false. And these are Boolean expressions. And that is a Boolean expression. The whole thing is a Boolean expression because the answer to that condition, that expression, is either true or false. This is a monstrous Boolean expression. How do you do it? You just do each one in turn. You look at is sugar more than 225? Then you look at is flour more than 250? And then you say is either of those true? And then you say is butter more than 300? And is that true? And that true? And only if that's the case, and we haven't done any of these so far, then we want to say make a big cake. So it's really pushing your logical skills to see if you can step through a program, work out exactly what's going to happen and then make it work. So we're going to go through this last one, um, but using Thonny to show you how you can do debugging um, and how you can understand exactly what's happened um, at every stage of your program. We've just copied it into Thonny, um, and I'm going to go, instead of running the whole thing, well, we could just run the whole thing. What we've got, butter is 275, 275. Flour is going to be 125. Sugar is going to be 175. And eggs is going to be 4. And we get this output, but we don't really know why we've got that output. We could put a breakpoint on so that when we run it, um, run debug current script, there we go, it should run it. Um, enter grams of butter, let's see, 275. Enter grams of flour, 125. Enter grams of sugar, 175. And it should pause when it gets to that line on here. We'll see. Uh, eggs is four. Yeah, there we go. I've put my breakpoint in and it's paused when it gets to the breakpoint. Why is that helpful? Because you can then see the value of every variable. Why else is that helpful? Because you can then step through. Look at these keyboard shortcuts here step into or step over. Step into is really helpful. The keyboard shortcut is F7. I'll show you why. So F7 here, else if, and then I've got this expression here. I'm going to press F7 again, and it will look at this expression first. I'm going to press F7 again, and we take this expression, and then we look at what eggs is, and eggs is currently 4. So is 4 less than 3? We've got that expression. So then we've got the values in there. We now work out is 4 less than 3. And we say that's false. Then we do this one. Is eggs, which is four, four, which is just four, is four more than four? No. So now I'm going to do false or false. Well, for an or to be true, I need either to be true and I haven't. So that's going to be false. So then I'm going to ignore that because I've just got a false there. Let's do the next one. Is sugar less than 200? Well, let's look at what sugar is. It's 175. We look at what 200 is and compare them. So this time, that's true. Keep pressing F7. We look at what flour is, which is 125. And then we look at, is 125 less than 200? Yes, it is. So this is the process that you're doing in your head. And then we say, for an AND gate, 
and logic, we need both inputs to be true. And we've got both to be true, so therefore, it's just true. So that's why we run that line of code here. So we send that value as a parameter to the print procedure, and then it's displayed on here. So that's what a breakpoint is. How do you do it? You just click on the gutter over here, or double click sometimes. And then you have to make sure that you go um, debug rather than just run. And then once you've got to a breakpoint, or even if you haven't, you can just say debug current script and then just step through each line. The only other thing I haven't said is the difference between F6 and F7. Step over doesn't do that fancy thing where we go through every set of brackets. It just runs the whole line. Um, so F6 is useful if you just want to do things quickly. F7 is useful if you want to see exactly what is happening. So if I just press F6, it runs that whole line, that whole block in one go. So the remaining activities are just examples of code that has some errors that you need to be able to work through. Um, the crucial thing when you have a question like this is, and these do come up in the paper two questions, you have some code that's got some syntax errors in. I'm just going to highlight this line. It says, do not add additional functionality. You might find a program that you've been given that you think is horrible and you prefer to rewrite it with a for loop instead of a while loop or to try and put exception handling in so that it doesn't crash with a runtime error. Just don't. Because the mark scheme will be set up in a way that you get marks if you correct certain things on certain line numbers. So resist the urge to do more than the question is asking for, please. When you've finished all of these, you need to make sure that your work is uploaded to Half Term 9 Algorithms and Programming 9. And then we'll continue this theme next lesson. Thank you.